Let the church say amen. amen. You know, um, it's truly a blessing when men come together for worship. I got a half an amen. I thank you for all, all three of you all. Uh, I'm going to say it again. You know, I got to do that again then, right? It is a blessing when M-E-N come together for worship. These brothers could have been statistics. Amen? I've been in prison ministry now for 30 plus years. Okay? And I met a young man years ago. 22 years old, and he said, Pastor Edwards, they gave me life. I said, 22 years old. He said, they gave me life, and I want you to pray for me because they're going to have a hearing, another hearing. To find out if that's life or life without the possibility of parole. All those years ago, this was 20 years ago. And as I had looked out on the internet and just happened to be looking out on the internet at Channel 5 all those years ago. And the young man's face popped up. Life without parole. I met a young man in prison. Oh, that was a black man. Met another young man in prison, white fellow. Life without parole. So let me say this again. It is a blessing when men can come together for worship. And I'm so glad what God has done in the hearts of these men to write, to sing, to worship. Men have been called by Almighty God to be the primary servants, hallelujah, in the home, in the church, and in the community. If called to be the pillars of the church, yet oftentimes it's men, the the faces or the presence of men that's lacking in the church. This year, some blessed soul put my name in to head up men's ministry. Some blessed soul. (laughs) In the southern vernacular, bless their hearts. And they asked me to head up men's ministry. And to be honest with you, I wasn't looking for nothing else to do. And I spoke with Pastor Nelson. He talked way too enthusiastically about me heading up men's ministry. See? So... I've been very slowly moving with this. That's why you had not heard anything. I'm moving as slow as molasses because my schedule is so packed with other things. But we're going to begin to get men's ministry rolling here soon. And this is my main thing. Guys, I want you to listen to me. Listen to me very carefully. What I don't want to see with men's ministry is six or seven people participating. We have a church full of men that are members here. I think that means that you said you love Jesus. Are y'all with me, somebody? And if you love the Lord Jesus Christ, you're likely born again in Christ. Hello, somebody. And God has given you power. God has changed your life. God has given you something new. And We as men need to be together. 
And I know it's going to be tough. So let me go ahead and say this to you. And this doesn't count for my time of preaching, so don't be writing that down. Don't even go there. The message comes up in a minute. Yeah, my, my wife, uh, for, for years now, she has lovingly, she times when I get up and when I sit down, but this don't count as far as my message is concerned. Anyway, men need prayer. Men need wor the word of God. Men need worship. Amen. Men need, listen, God doesn't need my worship. I need to worship God. So through worship, men get wisdom. Hallelujah. Because you can't worship without the word. Men need worship. Men need wisdom. Men need work. Hallelujah. And just in case you didn't know it, men need a woman. Oh, my goodness. Men, where are the men up in here? Wives, you, need, you know how you do that? Men need a woman that happens to be a wife and a wife that happens to be a woman. Wives, you can tell them about that later. So today is not a kickoff. Today is a word to say men's ministry is coming. And once again... This six, seven, eight people, when we've got men of God up in here whom God has blessed and God has radically changed, that's kind of unacceptable. I'm not planning on doing this all by myself. Okay? Let, 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 me, let me just say this now, and I've got to hurry up and finish. I've been agonizing in this. Let me tell you why. Let me tell you why. Because so often men won't show up. I get up on Sabbath morning and I take my raggedy self out to the prison so that I can preach the word. And then I come wherever my church is or wherever I have to preach or sing or whatever the case may be and serve. And then on Thursdays, I'm back at prison. My, my, my schedule's full. I'm an engineer and it takes up a lot of my time. So when you say you don't have the time, I don't have the time either. But I am going to make time for men's ministry. We're going to start very small. We're not going to want to intrude upon your time with your family just to bring you here and do nothing. We want to start small and grow. But I'm telling you, men, I need you in men's ministry. So I'm going to do something that I wouldn't normally do. I'm going to give my phone number out right here. You can look it up anyway. 615. Men. Men. Ladies. 615-476-7000. Four zero seven. Send me your email address. I ain't playing. Love you. <laughs> Send me your email address and say I'm in. Send me your email address and say I'm in. Text me your email address. Now we're gonna see. You've been praising God with these brothers here. Let's see how real it is. Because when women's ministry comes up, the women show up. Amen, Marsha. Amen? So we're not going to have a competition with the women. We're just going to step into our place. We're looking to have a week of prayer coming up in late September, early October. Looking to have a prayer breakfast in the future, some seminars in the future so that we men can grow in the word of God. There's more coming. Like, like I said today, um, just, like I said uh, a minute ago, this was not the kickoff of men's ministry. This is saying that men's ministry is coming and I want you to participate. Amen? Amen. Amen.
Before I call, you tell the storm when it will cease before it starts. The God above who searches deep within my heart. The highest praise cannot proclaim how great you are. There is none like you, none like you, the faithful one, Jesus. There is none like you. None like you, the faithful one, Jesus. No sacrifice can now repay the debt I owe. Or in this gift. Righteousness, that's all your own. Still, I will give myself away to make you known the name above all other names. Is yours alone? There is none like you, none like you, the faithful one, Jesus. There is none like you, none like you, the faithful one, Jesus. There is none like you, none like you, the faithful one, Jesus. There is none like you, none like you, the faithful one, Jesus. Name above all, Jesus, you are the everlasting, everlasting name above all, Jesus, you are the everlasting, everlasting name. Everlasting name above all, Jesus, you are. That's who you are. Oh, the name above all. Jesus, nobody greater, 
Nobody greater, Lord. Nobody greater than you. Oh, oh, oh. Nobody greater. Nobody greater, Lord. Nobody greater than you. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 3. Heavenly Father, stop my trembling. I bless your name this morning. I thank you for your great mercy and your loving kindness. I thank you, Heavenly Father, Lord, for compelling us by your loving kindness to come to this house of prayer, this house of worship, that we might join hearts together in fellowship and in worship. Thank you, Lord, for the worship in prayer. Thank you, Father, for worship in giving. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for worship in music. And thank you, Lord, for the worship in the study of your word. And we're asking, Heavenly Father, that you would hide me behind your cross. Hide me, O Lord Jesus. That the word may be heard, received, planted. And that your word might cleanse us, O God, and empower us to live our lives for you. Keep us, we pray. Teach us again, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. This morning I want you to get your Bibles. We're going to walk through some verses this morning. So please uh, get your Bibles. Whether you have it in old book form or whether you have it on your device, get your Bibles and walk with me. And it's already been read this morning, but let me just read just a few verses before I get started here. Um, now, Peter and John went up to the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. And a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful to ask alms of those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. So he gave them his attention, expecting to receive something from them. Then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have. I give you, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Amen. Church, say amen. amen. Peter and John were two of the principal men among the apostles. Uh, they were the two that were sent by Jesus to go and prepare uh, the Passover meal at what we call the Last Supper before the arrest and crucifixion of Jesus. But Peter is often recognized as the leader of the disciples who walked with the Lord Jesus. He was an impetuous, type A, in charge, overconfident, overzealous, I can do anything kind of guy. But in a number of places in the Bible, in the Word of God, it is recorded that just when Peter wanted to strut his stuff, he found that he didn't have the right stuff. He jumped at the opportunity to get out of the boat. He jumped at the opportunity to get out of the boat and walk on water with Jesus. But he lost his nerve when the wind got boisterous and contrary. When he was on the Mount of Transfiguration with Jesus, Moses, and Elijah, Peter wanted, he, he got so excited he wanted to start a building campaign uh, up there on the mount until God told him, hush, boy. And listen to my son. 
When it was foot washing time in the upper room, Peter wanted to be Mr. Overly Humble, and which actually was kind of over prideful, telling Jesus, you'll never wash my feet until the Lord Jesus said to them, if I don't wash you, you don't have any part with me. And then he said, just wash me. Wash me. When the soldiers came to arrest Jesus in the garden, we find Peter making one of his unrehearsed martial arts move and cut off an ear. I think he was trying to sever his head. But Peter failed again. Peter was a disciple. Listen, this is so sad. Peter was the only disciple to whom Jesus said, get thee behind me, Satan. Peter, who on the second saddest day of his life denied three times that he even knew Jesus, not long after boasting that he would go with Jesus to the death. Peter, poor Peter, poor disciples, they just didn't seem to have the right stuff. In other words, they lacked the courage, the compassion, the consecration, and the consistent commitment to do the work for which God had called them. But hallelujah, after Jesus was resurrected, he told his disciples to stick around Jerusalem because power was on the way. Power, hallelujah. If you don't know the Lord today and you want to surrender your heart to the Lord today, power is on the way. And you've heard the story after the ascension of Christ, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, the Holy Spirit, like the sound of a mighty rushing wind, filled the house where the disciples were sitting. And as Jesus had promised, they were endued with power. Hallelujah. They witnessed in other languages. Peter preached Christ crucified, resurrected, and Lord, and he called for the house of Israel to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of their sins. And hallelujah. And on that day, the Spirit of the Lord brought about a big baptism, hallelujah, where three thousand people went down into the watery grave because power had come and as Carl said before he prayed this morning the Holy Spirit gives supernatural power hallelujah hallelujah that wasn't in my message at first you kind of creeped in there but this message is not so much about Peter and the apostles as it is about what they got when the Holy Spirit got a hold of them and what the Holy Spirit performed in their lives and through them. After all the mistakes and lack of faith and even running out on Jesus and abandoning him, when the Holy Spirit came upon the apostles, not only did they have some new stuff, they had the right stuff. Men of God, and I wanted to speak to the men this morning since I was going to be talking about men's ministry. This message is for you. It's for the girls too. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Everybody can learn from this. But I want to just, men, gather in this morning. When God gets us right, come on somebody. When God gets us right, when God gets men right, we will find that the other things and other people around us begin to get right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I'm telling you, if we had more men marrying their women and are y'all with me, somebody, instead of what they, so many are doing with them? If they had more men that were getting married like God has called us to, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains the favor of the Lord. If men were not just giving up their families and then we become fatherless like me, we would have a whole lot less mess. When God gets us right, things start falling into place. Hearts are made new. It's a wonder how God moved in certain people in my family. I'm not going to name them and brought them nearer to the Lord or inspired them to draw nearer to the Lord when God got me right. When God cleaned up my life, I'm the only one of my mother's children uh, uh, whom uh, she ever said, get up. I I was, what, 19, whatever I was. I had dropped out of school, and I'm sleeping in at at 10, 11 o'clock in the morning. And one morning, my mother comes in the room, and she says, get up. Get up. Guess what? I got up. 
And she said, get up and get out of here. Go get you a job or go to school because you ain't going to lay up in here on me. Things start falling into place. Old wounds are healed and lives are changed. And we begin to realize more and more that our God is truly the awesome God. So let's look at our main text and let's walk down through this passage. Get your Bible. Stay with me here in the book of Acts chapter 3. And let's walk down here as quickly as we possibly can. So it says in verse 1, now Peter and John went up together in the temple at the hour of prayer, the ninth hour. So here you have Peter and John in the right company. Somebody say right company. See, they had corralled like cowards after the crucifixion, but now since they had been endued with power of the Holy Spirit, they had gathered as a company of the courageous. Hallelujah. They had been proud and arrogant, but now they're humbly bold. They had been, there had been tension among them. Now there was peace uh, and the bond of brotherhood with them and a common cause, and that cause was the gospel of Jesus. This wasn't a mule and an ox relationship. This wasn't a this was a relationship of two men anointed, appointed and united. Hallelujah. Here were two men who now lived their lives radically transformed by the anointing of the Holy Spirit who gave them the right stuff. And then the men were going in the right direction, and the right direction is up. It said they were going up to the temple. Peter and John were on their way up. What a blessing when men are found in the way of worship together. These men are going up. Amen. Amen. We've been down too long. Amen, somebody. Amen. See, I've been down to the dope house. I don't know about you. I've been down to the other houses. Oh, have mercy, somebody. I don't know about you. But hallelujah, praise God when God comes along and washes me thoroughly from my iniquity. Hallelujah, I can go up. And so can you. They were on their way up in the ministry, but this time for the glory of God. It's time for men to stop going down with folk that are going in the wrong direction. Out at prison. Thursday, when I got there, four men had overdosed on fentanyl. One died. You hear me? Men, we need men. And we need to be born again. I mean, when God really transforms you. You read me, somebody? It's time that we stop going down. You remember Samson went down to Timnath and it kicked off a life of lust that eventually it cost him his eyes, his strength, and his life. Are y'all with me? Abraham went down to Egypt and almost lost his wife. So they were in the right company. They were going in the right direction and they were headed to the right place, the temple, the place of worship, the house of prayer. Not only have I been in the wrong company in my past, but I've been in some wrong places and oftentimes it was because I was with the wrong people. But I'll tell you something also, they were with the wrong person. Are y'all with me? Somebody, isn't it interesting, ladies, when you all say stuff like this? Well, you know, my baby, he's just, he's just as sweet as he can be. But he's just hanging out with them bad boys. He's a leader of the gang. Come on, somebody. He's a leader of the gang. Huh? They were going up at the right time. It says the ninth hour. Of course, that was 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Ecclesiastes lets us know that there's a time for everything under the sun. Amen? There's a right time to go to school as we need to learn. There's a right time to go to work as we need to make a living. There's a right time to go to the grocery store because we need to replenish our food supply. Hallelujah. There's a right time to be at Sabbath school. Amen, men, men. Amen, somebody. As we need to grow in the knowledge of God, there's a right time to be at divine worship as we need to draw near to the heart of God and be empowered by the word of God. We also need the encouragement from the fellowship that we have right here. Praise God. This is not just for worship. Let me tell you something. Did you know that when you fellowship with one another, you are worshiping God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, and then you go to verse 2 and 3. I'm walking down through here real fast. And a certain man lame from his mother's womb was carried. He was 40 years old, by the way. Was carried 
whom they laid daily at the, at the gate of the temple, which is called beautiful, to ask alms uh, from those who entered the temple, seeing Peter, who seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms. As Peter and John made their way to the place of worship, we find them meeting the right man. Y'all with me? This was a moment ordained. I love it. I love it. I love it. This was a moment ordained and orchestrated by God. When men have been filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is leading you to the right place. He's leading you to the right time. He's leading you to the right person. Hallelujah. You may go to the right person and that right person is the person that you've got to help. But sometimes I need help. And so God leads me to the right person so I can get some help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God has certain purposes for certain people to be in certain places to minister to certain people. Hallelujah. My brothers, God has appointed people for you to touch. God has appointed people to touch you, my brothers. We need to be careful not to get ahead of God. But when Peter and John were filled with the right spirit, they were led to the right person at the right time. Hallelujah. Sitting in the right place, waiting for the right thing to happen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 4. Verse 4. It says, and fixing his eyes on him with John, Peter said, look at us. Here we have Peter giving the right invitation. Peter is giving the right invitation. In other words, Peter, now watch this. This is kind of odd for a Christian. Check me out. Check us out. We've got something you need. Let me, let, let me say this. Men, we ought to be able to invite people to examine us and check us out. Now, that seems kind of strange, but let me, let me expound on that a bit. People ought to be able to see that something of the likeness of Jesus is in you. Amen. Hallelujah. Check me out. That's something of Jesus that's in me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And listen, don't focus on the me. Focus on the Jesus that's in me. Hallelujah. We should talk like Jesus, give like Jesus, love like Jesus, work like Jesus, forgive like Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. Shout. Hallelujah, like Jesus. Hallelujah. I can imagine Jesus shouting every now and then. The Bible doesn't tell us that. Yeah, I'm imagining that, but hallelujah, we need to be like Jesus. We should talk like Jesus. Amen. Jesus said, let your light so shine so that men may see your good works. And what? Glorify your Father who is in heaven. Jesus said that you are the light of the world even as he is the light of the world. Is that right? Hallelujah. Jesus said that by their fruits you shall know them. And this is something I thought about, Brother Daniel. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to be able to taste you and see that Jesus is good. And you say, wait a minute, I don't want nobody licking on me. Amen, somebody. I sure don't want nobody biting on me. Amen. But what I'm talking about is they ought to be able to, 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 to get a taste of the, what, the fruits of the Holy Spirit in your life. Hallelujah. Listen, are you sweet? But not too sweet, man. Amen, somebody. So are you sour? Or are you a bitter man? I mean, are you like a Rottweiler? <laughs> Somebody has to hang on you. This, your wife has to hang on you. Beware of the dog. Come on, somebody. Huh? People ought to be able to taste us, get a taste of us. Some of us are not even palatable. Are y'all with me, somebody? In Acts chapter 4, it is recorded that one evening Peter and John were arrested for preaching the resurrection of Jesus. The next day, the rulers, the elders, and the scribes interrogated the apostles. The word of God said that when the religious muckety-mucks uh, examined them, they could tell that they had been with Jesus. Y'all with me today? They could tell that they had been with Jesus, but let me ask you something. Can anybody tell you've been with Jesus? Can anybody tell you you've been? Listen, can your co-workers tell that you've been with Jesus? Hallelujah. Can, is the waitress that waited on you the other day and got your food wrong? Somebody got your food wrong. Can she t Are y'all with me, somebody? Tell that you've been with Jesus. Uh, 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 can, can, can your coworkers, can your neighbors tell that you've been with Jesus? I want somebody to be able to say, hmm, you got something that's different. <laughs> you smell like you've been with Jesus. Huh? When your enemy checks you out, can they tell you've been with Jesus? You know, there's a certain way and a certain love that Christians ought to have with their enemies. 
Do you know what the Bible says? When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Hello, somebody. I'm going to verse 5 now. I got to keep on walking down through here. Y'all going to talk about me. He took up so much time. Uh, so it says in verse 5, so he gave them his attention expecting to receive something from them. So this man had the right attitude. Amen. He was humble and he was expecting to receive something good from these men of God. And because of his humility and his expectant heart, he got exactly what he needed when he needed it. And he got so much more than what he needed. Amen. Hallelujah. And like I said, some of us are like Rottweilers in the, in, in the junkyard where we got a sign over saying, beware of the dog. Have you come to this worship service expecting, what God, expecting to get what God has for you? Have you come to this worship service? Listen, is this just a, is, 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 is Sabbath worship just a check mark for you? Got it? I'm in it. Or when you come here, are you expecting, expecting God to do something with you? David said, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways. And are y'all with me, somebody? Sinners shall be converted to you when you get me right. Hallelujah. I know that you can use me to get somebody else right. This man had the right attitude. I, I, I found out that God answers prayer. Listen, God answers to prayer are tailor-made for each one of us. Are y'all with me, somebody? You know, we may be praying about the same person. We may be praying about the same situation. But listen, what you need is not exactly what I need. Are y'all with me, somebody? God has individual packages that he distributes to all of us. You, you, listen, you may have a bad knee. I may have a bad shoulder. You may have a bad back. I may have a bad attitude. Somebody come on with me. But God has tailor-made answers to our prayer. And this brother is getting ready to get his prayer answered. When we come to Jesus, we ought to come with a humble heart, a longing heart, a believing heart, expecting God to be true to his word, expecting that God knows exactly what we need, when we need it, how we need it, and how much of it that we need. Look at verse 6 with me, if you will. And then Peter said, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Here Peter offers the right man the right gift. Are y'all with me, somebody? The apostles were poor. The apostles were poor. Some people say they were very poor uh, with just enough for themselves. But Peter gave him what he had. Are y'all with me, somebody? And that's what Jesus expects of us. Listen, Jesus doesn't expect you to give what he gave me power to give. He doesn't expect me to give what he gave you power to give. He says, take what you have. Hallelujah. You may not can play like Terrence. You may not can, can sing like Brother Cox. You may not be as strong as Nate. That's why I shake his hand very hard and gentle so he won't break my hand. Are y'all with me, somebody? Hallelujah. But use what you have. See, listen, if you want somebody to pick up a car, call Nate, don't call me. Use, hallelujah, what you have. As Moses, what's that you got in your hand? He said, all right. He said, I'm going to use what you got in your hand. It doesn't always take money. Somebody say Amen. You see, the handicapped man uh, sitting at the gate, beautiful, was expecting to receive something from man. But Peter and John knew that they needed a miracle from Jesus. Even our praise puppets learn today that money isn't always what they need. Are y'all with me, somebody? That wasn't in there either. Amen. Praise God. I was just sitting down. And, but if you live long enough and you have an ounce of wisdom, you'll know that material things are not always the solution to your problem. Money won't straighten out your bent spoon attitude. Are y'all with me, somebody? Money won't straighten out your broken marriage. Money won't make uh, you faithful to God or your spouse. Money won't clean up your language. Money won't even make you more generous. Oftentimes, money makes you more greedy. So the answer isn't always the money. In my life, I want some good stuff that money can't buy and the bank can't take away. 
Amen, somebody. I need some good things in my life that won't run off. I don't have to show them off and the devil can't cut it off, pull it up, or rip it up. Are y'all with me, somebody? I don't have to show them off. Praise God. You ought to want the finest of the riches of the kingdom of God. You ought to want God's best. Hallelujah. Peter said to the man, I ain't got no silver and I ain't got no gold. My pockets are empty, but I've been filled with the Holy Ghost and I've got something the world can't give you and the devil can't take away. Hallelujah. I've got something that will do more than stock you up. I've got something that will fill you up. Hallelujah. Make you get up and stay up. Hallelujah. And so Peter commanded the lame man in the right name, the name of Jesus. Is that the right name, y'all? Not just any Jesus. There's a whole bunch of people back then named Yeshua. Are y'all with me, somebody? Uh, but, but, but this was uh, Yeshua of Nazareth. This was Jesus of Nazareth. And, and, and at that time, his name was a reproach to the religious leaders. His name was a reproach to the religious leaders, but his name was the power of God to those who believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm talking about Jesus. I'm talking about Mary's baby. I'm talking about the one that Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Jesus, the one who never lost the patient. Jesus, the one whose voice can calm the sea and raise the dead and can raise you when you are dead in trespasses and sin. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, we can rise up from the crippled life we've been living. Crippled by fear, crippled by shame, crippled by sin, crippled by lies, crippled by lust, crippled by pains and the infirmities in this life. In the name of Jesus, we can rise up. Hallelujah. Jesus is willing and able to raise you up and out of your mess. Verse 7, if you keep walking with me. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him, in, lifted him up. And immediately his feet and ankle bones, hallelujah. It makes me want to sing my ankle bone connected. No, I don't want to sing that. But anyway, he took it and his ankle bones received strength. Peter just didn't talk to the man. He took him by the right hand. In other words, he touched him and he lifted him in the right direction, which is up. The man didn't need anyone to pull him down anymore. The man didn't need anyone to drag him along anymore. The man needed someone to help him get up. And guess what, church? Somebody needs your touch. Somebody needs your touch. It's amazing what God will do. Are y'all with me, somebody? I remember having a neighbor years ago, and, 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 and it, it was a fellow that lived next door to us and stuff, and he taught me how to use my chainsaw. We just had a great relationship, and I'd be cutting my grass, and I'd just go just right on down in his yard and cut his grass. He didn't ask me to cut his grass. He said, Edwards, you've been over in my yard cutting my grass. Mr. Wall, I don't know who you're talking about. And one Sunday morning, I'm, I'm, I'm out in the backyard, and I'm zzz, I got my chainsaw because he helped me learn how to use it so I wouldn't cut my head. Y'all with me, somebody? And so I'm cutting a limb, a big branch that had fallen down in a storm or whatever. I see him coming down. So I say, hey, Mr. Wall, how's it going? He said, hey, Edwards. That's what he called me. Edwards, like we're in the military. He ain't in the military. Anyway, hey, Edwards. I said, where are you going? He said, I'm on my way to church to thank the Lord for a neighbor like you. Are y'all with me, somebody? Verse 8, let's move on. So he, leaping up, stood and walked and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. When the man received his healing, when the man received strength to get up and the power to stand up, he gave the right response, the right response. The word of God lets us know that he immediately went into the temple. Did you hear what I said? He, what? Immediately went into the temple. Uh, 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 listen, I've seen a lot of folk ask for prayer and God lovingly and compassionately and gracefully uh, uh, answers their prayer and you don't see them anywhere in the sanctuary. But this man went immediately into the temple. And when is the last time you got so happy about your healing, so joyful about getting that job you prayed about, so grateful that God saved your marriage, so grateful that God rescued your children, so grateful that the Lord has been so good that it stirred up something inside of you and brought some tears of joy to you. Hallelujah. And you just had to let it go. Hallelujah. Glory. 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 
Hallelujah. This man went into the temple. Yes, he did. Walking and leaping. And y'all with me, somebody. Praising God. Hallelujah. Uh, you remember, take six said, I've got something within me. Hallelujah. Got something within me. Hallelujah. Consider your own natural abilities. How might you enjoy your natural abilities more? And how might you use them differently if you had received them by a miracle? Mmm. Mmm. Listen, I think you, you just treat your body just a little bit more. Di- Are y'all with me, somebody? Be just a little bit more careful about how you carry yourself. Here we have. Here we have the right man in the right company doing the right thing, walking and leaping and pra- praising God in the right place and giving the right God the right praise. Hallelujah. He didn't say, well, I'm healed. Let me make my way to the nearest bar for some celebration. He just couldn't wait to get in God's house and and give God some praise. It's so hard uh, to get some men whom God has given so much into the house of God uh, or more so to invest their time and talent in his service beyond the Sabbath worship. Beyond the Sabbath worship. Hallelujah. Beyond this Sabbath worship, don't just check it off and go live for you for the rest of the week. Verses 9 through 11. I'm getting through here, y'all. I'm getting through here. You can beat me up later. Verse 9. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Then they knew. Then they knew that it was he who had sat begging alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. Now as the lame man who was healed held on to Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's, greatly amazed. Let me tell you something. God didn't heal this man just to blow his mind. Y'all with me, somebody? This man was healed for the furtherance of the gospel. Y'all with me, somebody? When God answers your prayer and heals your body, hallelujah, it's for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what it's all about. The Bible tells us that all the people watched this brother get his praise on. But more than that, they knew. Now, listen now. Listen very carefully here. They knew of the sad condition he had been in before the right stuff got a hold of him. God is not just working out your deliverance and your healing just for you. God is working miracles in your life so he can show others around you that he's able. He's patient and long-suffering. He's full of compassion and he's full of power. He wants you to have the the, the right stuff so that the uh, other folk who knew just how messed up and jacked up you were can give him some praise. And when they see that your life has been changed, when they saw that the dope was out of my life, when they saw that I was no longer hanging on the corner, people start asking you, well, what happened to you? I want to tell you about Jesus I want to put some word on you because I want you to know the same Jesus that saved my life the same Jesus that transformed my life hallelujah they knew how he was hallelujah and they could praise God for how he is God is saying to us if you will get with the right folk in the right place at the right time God's appointed time and call on the right name I'll come like a rushing wind and anoint you with power I'll fill you with my Holy Spirit until your cup is running over and the blessing that I've given you will overflow in someone else's life this was for the furtherance of the gospel this man found that in the right company he could know the Lord Hallelujah, men of God, we need to hold on to one another. That's another thing they said. In in one version, I think it's the NASB, it said that he clinged to Peter and John. Y'all went, brothers, let me tell you something. We need to cling to one another. Y'all with me, somebody? You don't have to be my running buddy, but we need to cling to one another. Y'all with me, somebody? I'm not going to call Daniel tomorrow and say, yo, Daniel, let's go hiking. Are y'all with me, somebody? That'll be next week. But anyway, I'm kidding. But we need to hold on to one another. Amen? We're praying for you, Nate, because we're holding on to you. Praying for your family because we're holding on to you. Somebody say amen. Give God some praise in this place today. This life is not a cakewalk. Amen? 
This life is not a cakewalk. It's a battlefield where many of our brothers are missing in action and away without official leave. Hmm? Far too many men are limp and lame. Far too many are boys who have never, ever grown up. Can I say it again? Far too many men, because she told me to say it again, have never, ever grown up. We need some grown up men, amen? We need the right stuff, the stuff of courage, of compassion, of consecration, and consistent commitment to do the work God has called us to do, and that work starts at home. This is what our sons and daughters need to see in us. This is what our wives are praying for us. You know what I say to the inmates? I said, hallelujah, somebody, 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 somebody is expecting you to come home different. And I'm not praying that you get out. Ooh, they say, oh, that's bad. Oh, that's bad. And then when they have gotten out of breath, I said, I'm praying that Jesus gets you right and he'll get you out. Because I'm concerned about who's walking down your street tomorrow. Amen? I'm almost done. Our wives need to see Christ in us. The power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Our wives need to see us men to be priest and prophet, providers and prince of God in our home. Let me tell you something, brothers. You need to be Prince Charming to your wife. Y'all, did y'all hear what I said? Listen, let, let, me, let me tell you something. What, what we need to do is, listen, you sisters kind of stay in touch with each other kind of anyway. You know, uh, men, let's get it together. Go home and be Prince Charming. Say something nice and sweet. Do something nice and sweet. And then call the ambulance because she going to fall out. You need to be priest. You need to be prophet. You need to be provider in your home. And you need to be the prince charming in your marriage. Amen. Buy your wife. Listen, go pick a flower. If you, listen, if you can't even afford it, go, just go pick a dandelion and say, baby, that's all I got right now. Now, 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 now make sure it's not dead. You know, the, the, it needs to be pretty and yellow. You know, start somewhere. Amen. You need to be the Prince Charming, hallelujah, for your wife. Terrence over there all cozy and stuff. Amen. Amen. So let me wrap this up, uh, verse 12 through 16, and I'm going to be done. So the word of God says, chapter 3, verse 12 through 16. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, men of Israel, why do you marvel at this? Or why look so intently at us as though by our own power or godliness, uh, we had made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered and denied in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just and asked for the murderer to be granted to you and killed the Prince of Life whom God raised from the dead, uh, 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 of which we are witnesses. And here it is, the clincher here. And his name, through his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. Yes, the faith which comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. It was the name of Jesus by the power of the Holy Spirit that gave this man a new life, as it were. Uh, I, I just, you know, I just want to surmise that the man gave his heart to Christ. The Bible doesn't specifically say that he was born again, but that's just something I believe for this man. And if he ain't there, oh, well, he's not there when I get there. But anyway, look what Jesus did. Through the name of Jesus, we are healed. Through the name of Jesus, we are strengthened. Somebody say amen. amen. And let me tell you something. As I alluded to earlier in this message, this man's healing was not just for him. 
Hallelujah. It was not just for the, listen, it wasn't for the glory of the apostles at all. This man's healing was for the furtherance of the gospel of Christ. This man's healing opened the door for the word of God because what happened is when all the people gathered around in amazement, Peter preached the word. Do you know that there are people whom God has healed that are going to hell? Healing is not salvation. This man's healing was for the furtherance of the gospel. When he was healed and all the people were gathering around, Peter preached the word. Go to Acts chapter 4 real quick. One verse, just one verse in Acts chapter 4. One verse in Acts chapter 4, verse 4. This is the result of Peter's preaching. However, I'm talking about the man being healed. Hallelujah. I'm talking about the apostles. Hallelujah. Moving by the power of the Holy Spirit. Look what it says. Read it with me, y'all. However, many of those who heard this word believed, and the number of the men came to about 5,000. Because two men. Come on, somebody. Two men. Two men. Two men, born again, two men, filled with the Holy Spirit, two men, anointed, appointed, and united, went and they had ministered to this man. And because of what they had done, 5,000 people heard the word of God and gave their lives to Christ. Hallelujah. You can make a difference, men. You can make a difference. Peter associated this man's healing with a crucified and resurrected Jesus. And an abundance were saved. Your healing and my healing, your wisdom and my wisdom, your hope and my hope, your hope and my, your repentance and my repentance, your new life and my new life are linked to the presence and the power and the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Resurrection power will fill your life with the right stuff so that others might hear the word that changed your life, that they might be transformed by that same power. Power for salvation, power for healing, power to forgive, power for reconciliation, power for witnessing, power to be the man that God has called you to be, power for you and your family. Come on, somebody. Power to endure to the end, power to give God the glory for the resurrection, power that he gave us when he gave us the right stuff. My brothers. Jesus died to bury all the wrong stuff, amen, that plagued us and maimed us. But he rose again to give us the right stuff, his salvation, his holiness, his faithfulness, his compassion, his endurance. And as I look at the corruption and the feebleness of men today and the state of so many families today, I am reminded that we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God and endued with his power so that we can have the right stuff so that we can do the right thing at the appropriate time for the right person in the right place. Are y'all with me, somebody? And they can give the right response. Praise to God.